The cornerstone of any solid Revit structural model is going to be your structural grids. We can put those in many ways into Revit, but I want to show you how to just put them into a blank model then show you how structural grids are comprised. Under Projects, let's just go New. I'm going to use my structural template and I'm going to click OK. Now under Structure, I want to go down to my Datum panel and I want to click my Grid button. I'm just going to pick a point like right about here. I'm going to come straight down to about here and I'm going to hit Escape a few times. If I go down to column line one, we'll see that it's column line one. Very similar to level, I can select my grid and I can actually turn on the bubble on the top of it. But again, similar to the level, I can click on my add elbow and I can jog this around and put it anywhere I basically want. Down on the bottom, there's a one. Up on the top, there's a one. Let's make a few more. I'm going to select my grid line one. I'm going to click copy. I'm going to select it. Now I'm going to move down about 25 feet. I'm going to type 25 and hit enter. Now if you had trouble with that, I want to undo it. Select grid line one again, click copy, click constrain. Now click multiple. Now I'm going to select my grid line. Now let's go 25 feet. And if you keep going to the right, you'll make a new grid line 25. Let's make grid line one through five, 25. And then one more 25. Excellent. Hit escape a few times. Got it. Now I want to make a new horizontal grid line. So I'm going to select grid line one. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to create similar. I'm going to pick a point right here. I'm going to pick a point right about here. Revit wants to keep sequentially numbering it. It doesn't realize that we've made a horizontal grid. So we have to tell it that we want this to be grid line A. So I'm going to select the six and I'm going to type in an A. One thing that you cannot do, if you select grid line A now, click on it and type in a 1 and hit enter, Revit's not going to let you do that. The name entered is already in use. Enter a unique name. This is important, especially if you think you're going to have two buildings in one model. It's very hard to do that because of the fact that you can't have two grid line A's, you can't have two level 1's. So remember that. I'm going to hit cancel and I'm tired of turning on this bubble down here. So I'm going to select my grid line. I'm going to click on edit type and my plan view symbol ends one. I'm going to turn on, I'm going to click apply. I'm going to click okay. Now I'm going to select column line a, I'm going to copy this down five times. So click copy base point. Let's go 25, Let's go 25, 25, and now 25. Now hit escape a few times. Now notice when I select grid line one, I can move it up and down and the entire column moves along with it. Now let's look a little deeper at this grid line. So I'm going to select grid line B here. I'm going to click edit type. Now what I want to do is my symbol will notice that we can have the same kind of thing. Grid head circle, grid head, no bubble. Again, this is an exterior family that we're going to load into our project. We can change this however your company standards are. Center segment, instead of continuous, I'm going to go with custom. Now we can have a center segment weight. We can have a different color, a pattern. We can have different plan view symbols. If we go none, that means it's going to break it in the middle. And segment lengths are six feet. And we'll see how that works. I'm going to click apply. I'm going to click OK. Now if I select this, and I click on one of these grips, and I drag that grip back, and I click off of it, notice that I can gap that center line segment. One other thing about grid lines, which is really cool, is if I go to my south elevation, we'll see our grid lines are showing up. But I'm going to create a new level. I'm going to select level two. I'm going to right click and create similar. On my draw panel, I'm going to click on pick lines and I'm going to offset that 25 feet. I'm going to go up 25 feet. Notice that it's above our grids. I'm going to go to level three by zooming in on it and double clicking on the datum. Notice that we cannot see our grid lines. This is because those didn't go up to level three. Revit is very literal. So I'm going to go back to my south elevation. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to grab my grid line five 
and I'm going to drag it up. So not only do we see grid lines in plan, but we also see grid lines in elevation. If I go down to level three, now we'll see these grid lines. If I go to my west elevation, I would need to do the same thing. So think about it. Revit's a 3D program. Even the 2D items that we're putting in have 3D effects on everything. Now if I go back down to level three, all of my grid lines are here. One other thing we can do, if I select one of my grid lines, notice that we can propagate extents. So basically, if I cut this grid line up, or if I make it weird, I can propagate extents, and I can go to other plan views that it might not be showing up in. I'm going to hit cancel here. One more thing. I'm going to go to my structure tab, and I'm going to click column. I'm just going to zoom in here, and for my column, I'm going to go with my height is unconnected. I'm going to put my column right here. I'm going to hit escape a couple of times. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that column. Notice that the column location mark is set for B2. So we know that B2 is our column grid intersection. So Revit understands not only the column in plan and elevation, but it understands what these intersections mean too. And also if I select the column, it rotates with our grid. So if I was to select my grid line and rotate it, my column's going to rotate along with it. If you hit escape a few times, that's pretty much grids in a nutshell.